Hey there YouTube, welcome to another Tech Me Out video. Thank you so much for being here, I really do appreciate it. In today's video, what we are going to do is we are going to set up and configure this bad boy right here, a Synology DS920 Plus. And I do want to thank Synology for sending out this unit for, my, for me to review. And I was tasked to do a whole bunch of videos that will be coming out in the future. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will not miss those videos that are about to come out. Now, the way I'm going to set up and configure this device is I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm going to skip the unboxing completely because there are a lot of videos out there that, that already did it and there's really nothing to it. It's just a box with an S device, power brick, network cable, and that's it. I was told that I have a, a surprise waiting for me in the box and uh, it's supposed to be the Synology NVMe drives uh, for caching and I will do a review on those as well. But what I'm also going to do a little differently is I'm going to do the configuration of this device with Synology SHR and I'm going to do it with varying size disks because this is where Synology really shines above all other vendors out there. Now, true, when you buy an S, you should also buy same uh, disk, same vendor, same model, same capacity. That's the right way to do it. But in some cases, you just want an S and just throw in whatever drives you have at home. And this is exactly where the advantage of Synology comes into play. Using SHR and varying sizes disks without losing the redundancy and without losing the capacity. So that's one thing we are going to do. And I'm going to also install DSM-7 beta on this device. And if you haven't watched my video about installing DSM-7 on your Synology device, I'm going to put a link right here to this video, so be sure to watch it. And I'm going to try to install DSM-7 as the first step. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm going to have to see if that, uh, that will be available for me as, as an option. But if not, I'm going to set it up and then install DSM-7. And of course, in later videos, we're going to dive real deep into almost everything. So let's jump into the computer and see how this is done. Join me. All right, guys, so we are at the computer and the NAS has already been plugged into power. It's already plugged into the network and I have placed inside the NAS whatever hard drives I had lying around. These were three one terabyte drives and one three terabyte drives, the drive, sorry. And I want to quickly show you a tool by Synology, which is the RAID calculator. All you have to do is Google Synology RAID calculator and you'll end up right here. And the reason I want to show you this tool, first of all, because it's, it's great as, as a planner of your storage capacity, and even in this uh, uh, SHR case, I can place exactly in this tool what I placed, what I really placed inside my NAS, three one terabyte drives and one three terabyte drive. And this tool will uh, uh, instantly show me how much data, how much raw space am I going to get? How much spa space will be used for parity? and how much space will be unused or kept aside. So keep in mind in SHR, unlike in regular RAID, where all the drives are, on, are exactly the same capacity, in this case, always in SHR, the largest hard drive will always be the one the system chooses as the parity drive. But as we grow uh, uh, through time and we replace more drives from one terabyte to three terabytes, this unused capacity will be extended and then it will be available for us. So this is exactly the kind of advantage SHR brings because in regular RAID arrays, the expansion of a RAID in some cases is completely impossible. So that's a tool I, want to, I wanted to quickly show you and get some benefit out of it. We'll Quickly, uh, I want to show you uh, um, uh, these uh, SSD cache drives that also Synology sent me and I want to thank them for it. And the reason I want to spend just a minute talking about them 
is because, as you can see, the, they are M.2 400 gigabytes, and they go in the bottom slots of the NAS. And just in, in a nutshell, an SSD cache is a way for storage vendors to take a storage based on regular slow uh, hard drives and bring uh, like some sort of a frontier that is SSD uh, based and the system will try to uh, as intelligently as it can push hot data or most used data to the front SSD tier and keep cold data, uh, data that is uh, unfrequently used on the cold tier, on the slow tier. And so it tries to create a situation where the most frequent data is, is getting SSD speeds. But in, uh, in the 920 and the 918 and, and the, in this family, uh, we have uh, some sort of, a, uh, let's say a bottleneck, which is the network. It's only one gigabyte networking. So we'll always have this bottleneck of this one gigabyte throughput. So uh, the question is, so why should I use an SSD cache at all in this kind of device and I'll tell you exactly why because the SSD cache can bring a lot of benefits in application inside the NAS and the most uh, excellent or the best example I can give is virtual machines if you are running virtual machines on your Synology NAS and you have SSD cache these virtual machines will get the benefit of SSD speeds so that's a minute about SSD caching and I do recommend if you already get a device in the family of devices that can uh, that has SSD caching slots I do recommend spending the extra dollar for an SSD uh, for M.2 caching they, they don't have to be Synology uh, they can be other manufacturers the Synology ones are 400 gigabytes and they're great they're very reliable I do recommend them so that's a minute or two about SSD caching. We will go right ahead and uh, try to get uh, inside our NAS and try to install it. Usually the best way, if this is your first time installing a Synology NAS, the, the quickest way to, to find the NAS on your, uh, on your network is to go into find.synology. Com and this uh, web page will try uh, to find your devices on the network. In some cases, it, uh, I mean in most cases, it works just fine and it will bring you right into the device login screen. In my case, I have other Synology devices and my computer is on a different subnet or a different VLAN uh, than the Synology drive itself. So what I like to do is just get into my uh, router, in this case, I go to the DHCP list section and I can see exactly what IP address has been given to the Synology device. That's what I usually do. And this is what I already did in this case. So I will go right along and type the address right here in the address bar. All right, so we are in the welcome screen. Let's start setting it up. And what I like to do is try to install DSM-7 right off the bat. So let's try that. I'll click on manual install. And I already downloaded the pet file of DSM-7. And let's see if it, uh, if it works. Let's click on install. I understand, that's great. All right, so. Uh, the installation is starting and hopefully once it's finished I'm going to uh, pause the recording right here and hopefully uh, resume the recording once this portion of the video is over. All right, so I, I'm pretty sure something went wrong because I did start the installation process and uh, I got a, a, a 10 minute uh, clock counting down and then it reached a zero and then it couldn't connect to the device and then it gave me even an error that it couldn't connect to the device and I had pings come out and come down and I had all sorts of weird stuff uh, going on and eventually the device did boot back up 
and gave me a, 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 like a, 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 the beep and, and the lights are starting to a, a be lit green but for some reason I am presented with a DSM-6 login window and yeah this is something that I guess was not really uh, refined or completed in the DSM-7 beta all right so we are continuing our uh, uh, setup of the device let's call it TMO DS920 I'm going to create a username I'm not going to use the default admin I'm going to create a password let's click on next all right for now I'm going to skip uh, uh, the quick connect uh, I don't want to uh, focus on that and click on go no thanks and as you can see it is running DSM 6 even though I applied a DSM 7 uh, upgrade uh, pet file on it so what I am going to do right now is I want to see if I can now upgrade this DSM 6 to DSM 7 and I told you my goal is to upgrade to DSM 7 and do all the configurations on DSM 7 and not 6 let's try let's do a manual update All right, so now we are ready to go ahead with DSM-7 and start configuring our device. The first thing that we are going to do is create our storage pool and our volume. So we will go right ahead in the, to the storage manager and because we don't have any volume and any pool we are presented with a creation wizard which uh, seems like uh, uh, very convenient let's click on start because we have varying sizes disks in our NES we are already presented with a ray type of SHR let's click on next and as you can see we can choose all four of our drives which was uh, uh, um, not possible on regular RAID types let's click on max to use the maximum amount of storage btrfs as our uh, uh, file system that's great and apply that was actually very quick very easy to do uh, uh, the creation of the volume will probably take a, a minute or two just to create the file system and then it will maybe take an hour or two just to uh, 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 really create and uh, scrub all the drives and create really the array with parity but at this point we can already uh, move forward and uh, uh, start configuring other parts of our NAS uh, uh, a few things I recommend doing uh, when configuring an NAS is going to the network and going to the network interface and as you can see we have now uh, got an IP address from DHCP at least uh, in my opinion this should be changed to a static IP address because we don't want uh, the IP address of the NAS to change so I will give it the address of dot .5 on my network on your network it might be different numbers I'm going to click OK and at this point I'm probably going to lose connection uh, uh, to the NES but in, uh, in, in, uh, in more advanced versions of DSM I will be automatically redirected to dot .5 as you can see I'm redirected to dot .5 which is an, an excellent, an excellent uh, feature and since now we have a, a, a static IP we have a volume the next thing uh, we should probably do and I won't get into it uh, uh, fully right now is start creating our shared folders now that we have a, a volume we can do that let's create a shared folder just 
so that we can see the process. Let's give it a name of data, just as, a, as an example. It will be created on our volume, next, next, and next. So, this usually takes just a second, but because our volume is now being prepared, that might take a little longer. If you want to uh, uh, give uh, users uh, uh, some permissions or deny permissions, you will do it right here. Click apply and as, as a, uh, um, in general, our NAS is ready to use and ready to accept data from us. Now, my, my next step after creating the, the shared folders and getting data into the NAS, I would go into the package center and start installing uh, 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 applications that uh, I like to use. I will not get into it right now because that's a video on its own. At this point, we have covered everything I wanted to cover uh, in this video. What I'm going to do right now is power down the Synology NAS. I'm going to take it to my network rack. I'm going to place it there because I have loads of other things I need, I am tasked to do with it. But I will uh, uh, give you my conclusion and my uh, summary about the device already in my network uh, in my network rack. So join me over there. All right, guys. So I got the device right here in my hand, and it's ready to go into my network rack. And I got a loads of topics and videos I'm tasked to do on this device. But I did want to show you or share with you my opinion of this device. And I know I am a Synology user way before uh, getting this device in my hands but my opinion is uh, on this device is beyond fantastic this device is a very small form factor factor it can go on a desk it can go on a network rack and it packs a lot of punch now it is a, a, a maybe a modest upgrade to the previous uh, ds918 but the DS918, even today, is a powerhouse of a device and it can do loads of stuff. So, this device not only can do everything Synology offers in regards to backup and synchronization and replication and photos with AI, which is a great uh, Google Photos alternative we will be covering in, in future videos. But this device has a, a, a processor that can do hardware transcoding so it can be your Plex server. This device comes with four gigabytes of memory, but it can be upgraded, at least officially, to a, a, you can add additional uh, eight gigabytes of memory in the slot right here inside uh, uh, the device. Unofficially, not going to cover it in, on this channel. It can go above uh, this additional uh, eight gigabytes of memory. And in general, this device can do anything you would imagine and more from an S device. I think it's a great series of devices. The only thing I am missing in this device is the lack of upgradability to 10 uh, gig networking. Uh, in, in combination with uh, uh, SSD caching capabilities, I think that that would have taken this series of devices uh, a, a whole bunch of steps forward. Of course, it would drive cost a little more, but I think, at least in my opinion, I would buy this device, even with the added cost of 10 gigabytes networking. So, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos come out. And there are loads of videos, especially on this baby, coming out, so be sure to not miss them. Again, thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next videos. Bye-bye, everybody.